Daniel the Predator James. What's up? Good to interview you, man. This is my first interview with you. I used to see you fight back when you were an amateur. Yeah. And I remember you walking out and the amount of energy you would bring into the cage. Like the the whole place, the mood would change in the whole place. I think the yeah. Sears Center I've seen you at. I've seen yeah. you at a couple other venues. Yeah. And uh, your fighting style is ferocious, but you really, really hype up the crowd. Is that something you're trying to do or do you just get emotional when you're about to compete? Man, you know what? I get so emotional when I'm about to compete, man. It's like, it, it, it's nothing against anybody. It just is like another guy across the cage for me. Like, I never saw him. I don't have anything against him. It's just like somebody told him, um, he, he got your key, you got to get out. Mm -hmm. And then I just like, and I just get so emotional. I just feel like it was a, like an attack on the world, but it was an attack on me. So, uh -huh. and I just get so emotional. I have to stop taking those emotional dumps though, man. I, I realized that when I was coming out, a few times and coach like are you crying i'm like man, i don't know i just get emotional it's like and tears come out my eyes and my friends in the crowd looking like dude like you cry when you walk out i'm like man that's that's it kind of seemed like gentle teddy bear or something you know but but no the energy the energy is that man i try to focus there i just I absorb everything from the crowd the the people that's there to see me if you're not there to see me it's kind of easy for me to just literally just convert you over you know yeah. what I'm saying? So with my energy is like I'm there, and I want. And when you feel someone presence in the building, you know they mean business, though. You know, so and that that just that's just the experience that I go through when I'm coming out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? From whoever's around me, it's just yeah. like I just get an anxiety of like winning. You know what I'm saying? So. And of course, yeah. you're fighting more experienced guys now, but I've seen that energy intimidate your opponents. Yeah. I've, I've seen them clam up a little bit just based on the amount of, of emotion you have coming out there. Um, I mean, it, get, it gives everybody an adrenaline rush in the whole place. You got a thousand people, their heart rates yeah. go up when you come out. It's yeah, something man. special. You, you got me blushing, man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, you're right, man. It's um, just the, the energy and like, and the, to, like to intimidate your opponent. Yeah with not like not trying to intimidate them you know what i'm saying you know um because i'm not the tough guy you mm -hmm. know um, I, don't, I, I really don't think this sport is for the tough guy mm -hmm. you know um it's for the smart and ones that has wheel i've seen a lot of men wheel taken in that ring and uh and just coming out and just just like you just said you know you just saw something i really didn't see mm -hmm. you know it's just like i just make eye contact and i just say you know what i'm here i'm here and at the end of the day i gotta have my hand raising you know what I'm saying? My hand has to be raised um, by any means it's necessary. And, um, and when, when you see a guy tremble from you throwing that first jab and you just see him buckle up. And that's when I know my guy, well, that's why I know I got my edge. When I throw that first jab and the guy buckle and it's like, oh, he, he's willing to take whatever I'm going to give him. So mm -hmm. I just got to go at him. You mm -hmm. know, most guys take it and then you just got to come up with a different game strategy. <laughs> like, OK, he ready to eat these. So, yeah. you know, so that's that's how it is for me. We're glad to have you back inside the XFO. Man, I'm we, excited. We, we love having you compete with us. Obviously, I saw you compete a lot as an amateur, but you've been traveling around as a pro. Yeah. You're five and two as a professional yeah. now. Tell me, how has Daniel James grown uh, in his professional career as a martial artist and as a fighter? Well, um, I think back, I remember um, a few things. I remember when I was amateur and I remember that first fight, mm -hmm. how nervous I was. And then the addiction came. And then um, I remember when I turned pro, you know, I turned pro in Bellator. It was like, whoa, you know, I always wanted to fight for Bellator. And mm -hmm. it was just, I was new to the sport. Mm -hmm. And when I got the Bellator, it just like, it was different. You know, it's like everybody in the city that'll see you. And, and, and I just said right there to myself, I have to grow. You know, even though my opponent was, he was a tough opponent. He was, he was feeding me to a five and oh guy. Mm -hmm. So I knew that. So I said, you know what? I have to take this. Mm -hmm. If I have to make a stand right now. Mm -hmm. And um, and I went in and I got the job done. And after that fight, man, it just, so many things happened as a pro and you have to grow, you have to evolve. You know, I've been, I've been down in America. It's our team to train with the best in the world. Uh, and just stand here at home at MTC, man, it's just, MTC has really, shown it's grown me into a more mature fighter you know and you know like coach al has been doing his thing with me man you know just just the dictator you know he's like the he's the general and everybody else is you know everybody else fought in place and coach barry worked with me on my strike and this guy he got it looking so phenomenal now it's just and i see those things that i'm doing and the energy that these guys put into me and the other guys is like wow you know like they don't have to do this but mm -hmm. they see something mm -hmm. um they see what i see and and and, and I grow like that, like jagging out. I grow off momentum. You know what I'm saying? So 
it's like when I'm getting that, when I'm, when I'm getting fed that type of energy, I don't have no choice but to grow. I get mm. bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, I don't grow as a say as a, well, just by trying to learn too much and have a crash course of everything. I learn by, I learn by loyalty. I learn by watching. I learn by just breaking things down. I have a, uh, photo photographic memory mm -hmm. you know I can mimic a small guy right. and say every big guy want to be the small guy right. every small guy wish they could be the big guy right. it's like being in the gym with big right. guys on you know right. and so th 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 that's my whole process of growing okay you know my whole process of growing is just doing that and and absorbing that type of stuff like that those type of things and and the momentum man the momentum it keeps me going mm -hmm. you know like it be times I can just be at a gym and I can run on a treadmill. I can do three miles, but I can go hit a bag. But it's when I come to training camp, it's just a hunger. And I was like, this is, it's, it's just like, you feel comfortable so much at home. Mm -hmm. And then everything that's about to happen. Yeah. You know, and then when I leave the gym, I just sit in my car and relax. Like, well, I just feel like I ate, I'm full. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you, when I leave and I know I'm full, I know this, like, that's the process of growing to me. Right. To me, everybody got their own, you know, view on, growing and that's how I grow I don't grow by you know the outside the end that whatever I grow off my people that's around me that love me that that's putting all the energy into me that the, um to be better than I am mm -hmm. you know because I kicked Daniel James ass a year ago <laughs> right you know what I'm saying so right. that's just that's just how I grow gotcha you know? you're setting the bar higher Speaking of growing and uh, speaking of the people around you, you've been doing a little bit of like charitable work. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, there's been crime in the city of Chicago for a long time. You're Chicago born and bred. Mm -hmm. And you've, I'm sure, had a front row seat to, to uh, seeing how kids grow up in Chicago and the, and the path that they take and, and what they feel their options are. I know you've been involved with Hoopademics and yeah. I know um, that you've been working hard to uh, try to help the kids. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing? Uh, well, um, with the Hoopademics program, the program is, um, is, a, is a diverse program that, um, that um, brings kids in. Um, not focusing only on sports, mm -hmm. but I'm focusing more on academics too. We try to okay. balance it out, okay. and um, and um, just you know, just me, growing up with my friends, you know, we saw a lot of things, you know, and and we, you know, we, we was we was those guys that everybody seen walking to the basketball court every day, right. you know, and it was like, and when you get old, you like, man, we really had a safe way going to the basketball court, and seeing the guys that was doing bad, not bothering us because they looked at us like these guys play ball, they are positive and this and that. So throughout the years and, and throughout me and most of my friends are doing what we do now, um, we just got more involved into like, you know, the youth and dealing with like the sport programs. Um, the Hoopademics is just a, a, a base of like what's, uh, uh, what's going to be big for the future because the program is going to expand so large, you know, by getting kids from all walks of life, you know, um, Putting, put, putting on different showcases, um, inviting different athletes in just to come and just interact with the kids and give the kids some hope and, mm -hmm. and um, some motivation, inspiring, motivating to lead is what the program really is all about. You know what I'm saying? So it's not about just, you know, you coming in, hitting the baseball, dribbling the ball or running some wind sprints or winning all the time. You know, it, it, it's about you, like you told me, you know, how, how do I grow? Right. Helping these kids to grow. If you can grow, you got to show somebody else how to grow. You got to, you have to be that iron that can shar um, sharpen other iron. Mm -hmm. You know, and those are the youth, and those are the kids. We call them sponges. You know, they ex you, they absorb everything. Yeah. So whatever you give them, is what you're going to get out of them a few years from now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, the the program has been a tremendous, a tremendous like part of like me and most of my friends' life, man. It's, um, um, just, you know, because it's all we did was play sports and sports was a way out for us. Yeah. You know, it was just like, let's get real, you know, either you in the street mm -hmm. or you playing some sports right. or you in school mm -hmm. or you in school playing sports or you in the streets. And you, if, you're doing all, if you're doing that, you have to understand that like, you know, those guys in the street that look up to you without letting you, without showing you that they look up to you, they're doing it from a distance, mm -hmm. you know, it's some, it, it, it's a certain thing that they they feel like, you know what, if he slip up, we might can bring him into the streets with us. And now he's equal. Well, I don't want to be equal. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be equal to you. I don't want to be equal to, I'm not better than anybody, but if I can 
inspire a kid or any, a grown up, right. you know, and, 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 and motivate them to do so much better than they did yesterday. Mm. And if I can feel more excited about what you do, then you are excited about what you do, it's work needs to be done because I'm gonna get, I get fired up so easy. I get fired up off seeing, you know, 20, 25th of December on the calendar because I'm about to open a Christmas gift. You know what I'm saying? I still, I'm that kid right. that still wanna open the Christmas gift at 12 o'clock at night. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and we just, we just wanna keep that, we just wanna keep that in the lives of those kids. And, um, and through Hoopademics, you get that. You know, these kids feel that, um, they know that you care about them. They know that, you know, um, like I, I, I could speak about, I could speak about my friend, Mark Prey. You know, he, like, he really cares about these kids. I see a lot of people with programs, but the things that he do, he go above and beyond. And I, I see him doing the same things that our coach did for us in high school. Mm. You know, pick them up, take them to breakfast, take them to lunch, or um, on days that they're not training, just, hey, what you doing? Call in, check in with them, you know? And those things right there, you know, inspire me too because I'm like, wow, I inspired my homie. And now my homie inspiring me. Mm. And he put this whole program together. The only thing he asked is for us to just be the brothers that we are and just continue to talk about a word of mouth and expand, you mm. know, and, um, and make it positive. You know, tell me, man, before you go in the ring, just make sure you're on point, make sure, you, make sure you're solid, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm being solid through all the positive things that I'm seeing throughout the city getting ready for the fight two weeks up into the fight there's no how you feel or whatever i feel the same way that i did when i first started training for training camp only thing different is i understand that a job needs to be done mm -hmm. and those people that got those tickets it's coming out and they come to say you know what that guy worked with my child or that guy spoke to my son he took a picture with me and my wife and um and that was motivation, like, and we can sit here and he has stopped being six foot five, 265 pounds, <laughs> and he will stop and say, hey, what's up? And like, he want people around him. He liked that energy. He liked to talk to you. He liked to be involved in your life. I like to hear about the travels, you know what I'm saying? Right. So those, I'm sorry, you know, I can get to, I can go on and no, on about no, so thank much. You, thank you for going on <laughs> so much. I, I, I see, that's how I grow. I get charged up, you I, know what I, I'm I've seen this. I've seen you hanging out around the shows, hanging yeah. out with people, staying late. Uh, I've seen you at, I want to say it was the UIC Pavilion before, yeah, yeah. and I think your opponent didn't show up or something happened. He missed weight. I don't know what happened, but you were just in the stands the entire time, hanging yeah. out with people, taking pictures, uh, talking to families who were, who were fans of yours. Yeah. If, if, if there's a kid out there looking at this video, listening to you speak, and they want to get involved in Hoopademics, uh, where should they go? Um, they can go to um, Hoopademics' website, um, hoopademics.com. Um, you can also follow it on Instagram at Hoopademics, at Hoopademics. Uh, um, you can get in touch with me through my website, fitfightmotivation.com, and, um, and we can make that whole connection there. Facebook, um, Daniel James MMA, um, Twitter, djames2600. Um, those are all the handles, and, and, um, and hopefully we can get more kids out, you know, in these programs, you know, through word of mouth or yeah. them searching, you know what I'm saying? So it all play out. Gotcha. That's what I got. My last question for you, Daniel, your opponent is Jordan Mitchell. What do you know about your opponent and what's going down uh, this, this uh, next Saturday night? Well, um, first off, Jordan Mitchell, I, um, a few of my teammates saw the guy fight. Uh, okay. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really know anything about him. I watched a few videos. I, I barely, rarely do that. Like, I really don't go to YouTube and pull up a, a person fight. Um, coaches train me for the fight. Mm -hmm. um, I just look at it as any other fight, and I go out there with my hands up, do what I got to do, strike the way I strike, um, bring the power, um, he shall fall. So it, 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 there's, there's nothing spectacular that I'm looking for him to do. You know, every heavyweight strong. You just have to be in shape, gotcha. and in shape, that's what I am. So I'm a Clydesdale, I'm like a horse, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Um, so I, I expect for you to understand that it's going to be a show that night. So you guys be ready and be on them heels, because it's going down. Awesome. Yeah, it's going down.